All right, go ahead and cut the cards. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. That's not how you cut a deck of cards in the game of Woodyard Rummy. That's how you split a deck of cards. All right, welcome back. Well, we had a little bit of fun with that deck of cards, and uh, just to show you how uh, how precise and how accurate those log splitters really are, the uh, Wolfridge 17 VS. But today, we're going to be working on my uh, my bucking table, and we are cutting up slab wood. And I know we did this in a video before, but since then, I've put the uh, the plastic sheet all the way across. So everything should slide down and out. And some of these things are quite a bit bigger. That's a, a good four or five inches piece of slab there. Some of it's smaller. We're going to get it all cut up and uh, then go over and jump on the splitter so I can finish up the slab wood of this hickory that I have. Discuss about this uh, bucking rack. And I honestly, I think it's the best bucking table design out there. When somebody says they think something's the best, that's an opinion. Um, facts, data, whatever. Some people might not uh, think so, but uh, in all reality, I guess it's basically designed to what my needs are and how it works for me. So it might be the best table for me, but it might not be the best for you guys. So let's go ahead and jump in on uh, getting this stuff cut up. And uh, I'll even talk about some of the dimensions on this because I know I've had a lot of people ask for the dimensions of this. And I don't have any blueprints on it because I basically built it off of my height and what seemed to uh, work the best for me. So we'll get into some dimensions on this here shortly, but uh, let's go ahead and quickly get all these slabs cut up and get them down and out of the way. Another thing I wanted to point out, and I did it before, these blue marks I painted on here, those are 16 inch increments. So when I go through and cut this, I know I don't have to measure on here because if I just eyeball that up, I'm rated right 16. That's plus or minus an inch, and it doesn't matter for what I'm doing at 16 inches for my round fire pit. The other thing is, is the way I've got these uprights set up on here, they're all at 36 increments evenly spaced across there and then i had to add these oddball ones so the whole slab doesn't fall through on you you got to cut this one first and then jump back and you'll see as i go down through here the spacing on these was was important the whole thing is 12 feet long and we're at for me about 35 inches tall so i wanted something to come to about my hip and that's why i say that the dimensions on this thing are important to my height. I'm not 6'5", but I'm about 5'10". <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
you some dimensions from the ground up on this. It is 12 feet across. The reason I did that is because most of the logs that I dragged down out of the woods, I cut them at 12 feet because that gives me nine 16 inch increments like I've talked before. Now again, the height on this is 34 inches. If you come around the side over here, you'll see that I've got the, the, the board up here, the top board, which is part of the ramp, and that is at 40 inches from the ground up. And then on the back side over here, it's 54 inches. So whatever that angle is over a distance of six and a half feet, somebody can trick that out. I'm not going to right now, but anyhow, that's your angle on that. And then on the inner ramp where all the logs slide down, it's a steeper angle. And that starts at, and it's down underneath this one. And it starts at about 30 inches because it starts off the bottom of this board, 30 inches down to touching the ground on the bottom down here. And that is over eight feet. That bottom ramp is eight feet. And the top ramp, the top boards on these are six and a half feet. So whether that gives you good dimensions to try and build something off of this, it's basically just framework this way, framework that way, built around standing frame. And if you come around this side real quick, you'll see that this backboard here is what holds up the upper ramps. And then there's a board down on the bottom that holds the, the lower ramps. And you can see where I put that plastic over. And any of you that might not have seen the original video on this, these were all just rough cut pine boards that we uh, put on Adam's sawmill, cut up, and then nailed them into this, what I would call the header board down here. That's what holds that. Now I put this plastic down so you can see that even logs that are not round, slab wood here, so as they get cut, they slide right down and out. That was one of the benefits of this that I didn't know was going to happen. I'll bet those things will slide down there if I put some plastic on it, and so they do. Now, a round log, those things just drop and tumble, and they roll all the way down. They'll roll right into the splitter. You can do this for bundles because it makes really good size. I mean, in bundle wood, most of it's 2 inch by 3 inch. You know, a couple inches there, 3 there, and just a, a perfect size bundle log, campfire log. So that's what we're going to go ahead and split this stuff up into. Before I jump onto the, the Wolfridge 17 VS splitter, in the comments, if you guys have any more questions on a size of this, and again, I don't have the angles for you, but at six and a half feet wide and the heights that I gave you, you can do your own trigonometry and figure that out. But really, I did this based off of what works best for me. If you guys noticed the entire time that I cut all these slabs up, and it goes the same with uh, cutting up round logs, I wasn't stepping over anything. I wasn't rolling any wood towards me. I wasn't tripping. I wasn't, you know, it, it was very, very safe and very comfortable. And I wasn't bent over. I was not bent down cutting up logs off the ground. So it makes it extremely user friendly. Uh, I could probably cut all day on that bucking table. So if you ask me, yes, I do think it is the best bucking table out there. Hit me up in the comments if you've got questions on some more dimensions of this. I don't know what much more I could give you. The rest of the boards that are on there were all mainly support boards. For this rail, it's supported in two places. It's got a, a header going underneath it as support, and then these are all screwed into this bigger header here. Uh, this is a 2x10, two 2x10 ten, two ten under here, and the rest of this stuff was all just rough cut. The only thing that I went and, and did store-bought was the two by eights for the the sloped ramp rails down and the two supports because those were the first thing that failed when uh, i tried making them just out of the rough cut pine a little saw holder there which actually really really makes it nice those rails were put that way so i could come in with my pallet forks and pick the whole stand up and move it around if i wanted to because of the width that i made this at six and a half feet wide 
I can load this thing onto a trailer and I can take it to wherever I want. Just have to have a way to unload it. I think that you could design one of these up to be on a trailer to have some wheels to uh, maneuver it or move it around if you want. Best bucking table I've ever built. I've got a basket over here of uh, hickory. This was some maple that I was working on from some smaller stuff. A couple trees I took out down below down there and then uh, you can see I've got quite a bit good collection of uh, logs over here. This is a nice big beautiful uh, red oak. That's bigger than 12 foot because I wanted to try and get that all in all one piece. And then I've got a ton of, of good uh, cherry here. Those are all 14, 16 inch diameter. There's another piece of uh, hickory down there. A couple more pieces of hickory. A lot of cherry down in there. And uh, that pile is six foot tall. Personally, this splitter is the only way to go.
almost a basket full of the uh, hickory split up. Got a little bit left of the slab wood here in the ground. I'm going to go ahead and split that up real quick, get that taken care of. But uh, two things that I did want to talk about. Again, this this bucking table, absolutely love it. It it couldn't have worked out any better for what my needs are. Don't trip over logs. Uh, I don't have to worry about kicking, lifting, and doing any of that stuff. They roll out, land down here. I can work as I want to get them up onto the 17 VS. And guys, let me tell you something. I've run both the, the vertical and horizontal splitters. And I think that uh, the vertical is my absolute favorite. Several reasons. One, I don't do production splitting. So it's, it's not important to me to hurry up. It is a beautiful 70 degree day. I've got shade here in my uh, wood yard, so I'm not trying to hurry up and get done with what I'm doing down here. Just kind of enjoy sitting, standing out here, getting it done. But with that being said, that 17 vertical splitter is very fast. It's as fast as I can go. It goes as fast as I go. And uh, I really, really like being able to, to handle the rounds, handle the logs, keep them right in front of my face, split them, throw them into a basket. I like stacking. It seems like more and more of you guys are going into just dumping them right into a basket, and that's fine for what you do. I don't, uh, I don't sell them by the bulk. I don't sell them whatever. If somebody wants a basket, hey, I got a nice stacked basket they can have and go from there, but I really personally enjoy the vertical splitter. It's easy on my back. It's easy on my arms all day long to sit here, and uh, it's kind of therapeutic. If you're not familiar with these things, look them up, wolfridgemfg.com. Check out what they have for splitters. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe. We'll be doing more of this stuff. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.